Universities are about to open and there is a lot of talk about them being spread thin. Although we place a huge emphasis on higher education, there are statistics suggesting that first year enrollment figures have stagnated. In fact, they've even dropped at a time when matriculant numbers are growing. My next guest has written an article about this and he says private institutions have a vital role to play and innovative business models are being found that can make tertiary learning more affordable and more practical. So uh, chatting to us via Skype, we've got but Chris Fundamava, he's the CEO for Stadio Multiversity. I think I've said it right. Chris, is it Stadio? Is that correct? Yes, it's Stadio Multiversity. Stadio, thank you. Thanks very much for being with us here on the program. Pleasure. So, this is really interesting findings. I mean, what, what were your thoughts when you sort of were, were um, researching for this? Yes, so I think for the viewers, it is incredibly important just to share a couple of statistics in terms of the tertiary environment. So currently in South Africa, there's 26 public universities um, that accommodate approximately a million students. Now, the private brands actually take care of about 200,000. So let's say there's a total of 1.2 million students in the tertiary space. Now, the important part of these statistics uh, is as follows. Um, our 26 public universities can only take in about 170,000 qualifying students per annum at first year level, whilst 400,000 grade 12s <laughs> complete their grade 12 studies and, as a matter of fact, get a university exemption. Yeah. So many of these students can't get access, but they do qualify and uh, that, that should be sorted. Yeah. I mean, that's 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 quite it's quite alarming, actually. I mean, you talk of the role of private institutions and that they have in higher learning. What is that role? You know, the state is actually doing a, a, a very good job. Our, our current public universities. Uh, now, I'm referring to most of them that's in the Premier League in terms of research. They're doing a sterling job. But. Uh, as an ex-headmaster at school level, I just feel for all those youngsters that actually get anything here between 65 and 70 percent, and so they do qualify and they've got their dreams and hopes, but they can't get access because of two reasons. Universities uh, have limited infrastructure. B, the state can only supply so many subsidies. So mm. if the private sector can crack the nut to supply tertiary education at the same price levels yeah. as the state. I guess, you know, that's a perfect scenario of the state and the private sector then together as a team uh, service these students. Yeah. You know, it's, qu it's quite interesting because you'll speak to a lot of people. And, I mean, I'll, I'll even bring, I'll bring Sakina into it because, you know, my co-host on the show here, she's currently down in Cape Town helping her daughter get into, into university. But, you know, you talk about bursaries and scholarships and all of these things. But... Um, institutions don't, don't want to pay for pr these uh, higher learning uh, institutions because the fees are just too expensive uh, and perhaps have a different curriculum to that proposed by government. Uh, true. Uh, I think it's important to understand that quality always comes with, uh, you know, with, with capital spend. The challenge for both the state and for the private sector is to keep it affordable because... Um, you know, money shouldn't stand in the way of a passionate youngster uh, willing to learn and having the capability. So that's the nut to crack. So um, we, we should strive to keep it affordable now. In terms of costing, you know, if, if, if we can pitch uh, in terms of distance learning at approximately 20,000 rand per annum and delivering a contact learning a uh, bachelor's degree at about 50,000 rand per annum. Mm. Uh, I would say it's, it's fair trade, and with that money you can actually pay very good lecturers and provide the infrastructure and also the written curricula. Yeah. Uh, yeah. However, we should continue seeking ways um, of supporting students that can't afford with, with either discounts or, or bursaries. Now... I can only speak on behalf of Stadio Multiversity. So what we do, I don't know whether you know, but I was the, I'm the ex-CEO of Kiro. And what we did with the Kiro School yeah. is that we allocated X percent of our turnover, uh, you know, to, to help individuals that do qualify 
and actually want to go learn. And, and you know, you can also only do so much. But I guess if everybody in this country can do their little bit, you'll be surprised about the effect. You know, I mean, it's, it's, it's so interesting. It really is. And, I mean, you, nice to hear your history at Curo, but you're now CEO of a multiversity. What is that? What is, what is a multiversity? A multiversity is actually a, a place of higher learning. Yeah which provides degrees, but seek out the degrees which are aligned with the needs of the skill sets required by companies and industries. Mm -hmm. So we will go for the more practical degrees that's aligned with the skill set. So when the youngster actually accepts a post in a particular company or industry, uh, 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 whoever provides the work will clearly see that there's an alignment between what the company needs in terms of the skill set and obviously what the written curricula provided. Yeah. Just finally, and, and, and we've got you here, but this free education model. Um, there's so much more I'd like to talk to you about, but we just don't have time. I, in your opinion, is free higher education sustainable or should we be looking at another kind of model? Look, uh, I fully agree with the state when they argue that a youngster should be able to study uh, if the passion and the willingness and the competency is there and money shouldn't stand in our way. However, let's just accept that, that you've got to service your infrastructure, your staff and your curriculum. Now, uh, I sincerely hope that NISFAS can do their thing. Mm. But you know what, what I saw uh, in the private space, that the more places of delivery that actually start existing in the private space, what technically happens is you are opening spaces in our public universities. Uh, so you are actually widening access. But the trick is to keep it affordable. Yeah, yeah. Listen, we have to leave it there, but we thank you so much for your views and opinions. Very, very interesting, and I, I, I imagine we'll do more on that. Chris Van Amava, he's the CEO of Stadio Multiversity, talking to us very much so about uh, uh, just different issues when it comes to higher education and how we're finding that uh, uh, the landscape in South Africa actually tends to be dropping a little bit, not so many entries as, as previously. All right, let's quickly take a break.